Hi, I'm Kevin Scott with 100 Huntley Street, and we are here today with Julia Eminen, the founder of Sport for Freedom. Julia, we are so excited to be with you today. Thank you. It's amazing to be here with you. You have a remarkable story. So uh, start us kind of at the beginning. You became passionate about this cause of human trafficking and sex slavery. Tell me how you even got confronted with this cause. Yeah, about six years ago. I guess before that, I, I really was a prodigal daughter. And for the first time in my life, my um, my eyes were open to something bigger than myself. And I guess I was available to be disturbed. And I went to the cinema and watched the film Taken and you know, watched in horror as Liam Neeson's daughter and her friend were drugged and sold into sex slavery. And I literally thought, that's just a film that doesn't really happen. Slavery was abolished hundreds of years ago. And then I was at a conference, Hillsong Women's Color Conference, and heard as Chris Kane shared about, about her experience of learning about human trafficking. And my jaw was literally on the floor. I thought, how, as an educated girl, did I not know also about this, the fastest growing crime in the world? And, and I guess I just looked at what was in my hand. You know, I was completely overwhelmed. How could little old me ever make a difference to this huge injustice? And I work in sport, I love sport, but by no means am I some professional athlete. And, and I was running along the Thames with my with my best friend. I'd run a half marathon, you know, for charity for one of the charities. And then um, and then Steph said to me, her ex boyfriend had just rode the Atlantic, and she said, Julia, should we row the Atlantic? And as if it was a good idea, I said, Yeah, as if it was like grabbing a coffee from Starbucks, something easy. And not quite knowing that I'd signed myself up for what's known as the world's toughest rowing race. So that's how it came about. So, but. The whole catalyst for the row was because it was to bring freedom to those enslaved. What a cool idea. So you decided that you want to bring attention to this cause, yeah. you want to bring awareness, and so you're literally going to get into a boat <laughs> yeah. and row across the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. It sounds so crazy when you say it like that. And it was, you know, more people have gone to um, the, to space or climbed Everest than have rowed the Atlantic. So it was completely crazy. but. I think when you're so passionate about something, I had such childlike faith and, you know, the naivety I think was a blessing had I known what we were about to endure. Steph pulled out and I put together this, you know, crew of six girls, which became five and there were so many twists and turns, I can't even tell you, but it was just this statement and, you know, statement for freedom. And I think now, especially within the church, we, you know, know a lot more about human trafficking, but we just felt like it was such an amazing opportunity to follow the transatlantic slave trade route, but for the freedom of those enslaved today. The days and nights seem to just roll into one long adventure. I actually really enjoyed the monotony of the rowing. It just gave me a time to reflect and remember why we were doing it. I missed family and friends the most and the lack of communication was really hard. Many people told us that the last week was going to be the easiest part of our journey. However, although um, we had just a week to go and we were talking about what we are going to eat and looking forward to seeing people, it just seemed to drag and we were just, every day we were like, oh we're not there yet. People were screaming and congratulating us and then a little body grabbed me and hugged me. It was my mum. I'll never forget that feeling. It took a few days for it to sink in and realise what we'd actually achieved once we got to the other side. It was amazing. It was so overwhelming and words just can't describe coming in after four to five days, seeing our loved ones and realising that we'd achieved two world records which we'd set out to do. This row was a huge team effort and could only have been achieved with contribution from each and every team member. It's so important that we made a loud noise about human trafficking so that people would listen and know that something can be done about it. I want to see an end to slavery in my lifetime and Row for Freedom is just the start of my journey. Row for Freedom is just the beginning. Our fight against the injustice of human trafficking continues. What will you do for freedom? All right, Julia, tell me how this then uh, evolved into Sport for Freedom and, and what you're yeah. doing as an organization. Yeah, I I guess we saw the positive power of sport. You know, you tell people about a child or a young woman or indeed a man, um, because this isn't just a women's issue, but you tell someone, you know, about a girl having to service 30, 40 men a night. It's the most 
you know, you just want to turn the other cheek because it is so horrific and and it was it was hearing the stories of the girls that kept me enduring in the middle of the night when it was just so tough but I guess we saw the positive power of the row people don't want to hear about the stories because they were so overwhelming but you tell them you're rowing the Atlantic or running a marathon or you know doing something fun for freedom it just we, we saw the power of that so we founded Sport for Freedom about 18 months ago, and we are using sport to, as well, our goal is three threefold, so action, education, and rehabilitation. So we're very much saying, you know, what sport do you love and use that for freedom? So that's action. Education, of course, it's much better if we can prevent people from being trafficked. So in one area of Oxford, on one estate, 50 girls were groomed out of, out of this one, one estate where it's quite vulnerable it's quite poor and um, so we're using sport to keep the girls especially safe through sports so using it as an educational preventative tool and then rehabilitation so we're taking out survivors of human trafficking to um, horse riding days playing tennis or kidding out safe houses with um, with sports equipment yeah. so just using that real positive power of community and sport Julia from a pure marketing perspective I think it's genius I just I love the idea that because a lot of times people don't want to talk about the toughest issues. Yeah. And so you've found a really interesting way to bring awareness to something that's, that's destroying a lot of lives. Yeah. Um, how, what would your advice be to other leaders or other individuals who are passionate about a cause? Mm. How can they bring awareness to their issue? Yeah, I think, you know, I think a lot of people you know, you need to move people from awareness to action. And I think just having really practical ways that people can get involved, because for me, I was so overwhelmed and frustrated, actually. How can I make a difference? So that's when, after a few months of posting things on social media and trying to raise awareness a little bit, I realized, well, sport's my world. So I think having really practical, tangible ways. And so we've swapped the boat for the bike now, and we're doing this big cycle for freedom in, in, in a couple of weeks' time. Time, which is an amazing opportunity for others to you know actually join the ride and, and get involved and I love that sport unites across race religion boundaries and actually engages a, a lot of men so I think yeah it, it's been hard sort of founding a charity and and just learning to you know lead this thing has been challenging but when you're passionate about something it's infectious and it's such a privilege well wow. I love the line, moving from awareness to action. Yeah. That's, it's such an important issue. Yeah. You, know, you uh, have been able to inspire a lot of people, and now you've written a book, and so people can learn more about your story. Tell us about the book. So the book was really something. I went through a whole big parallel journey, and there was, there was a boat um, in our race called Dream It, Do It. And I've thought a lot about the name of that because a lot of people dream dreams, but it's in the doing part that people fail because the challenges come, the setbacks come, life can chuck cruel, unexpected blows. And for me, the moment I said, yep, sign me up, I'm gonna row the Atlantic in my naivety, I am um, literally the following week, my mum suffered a huge mental breakdown, not because of the row, but for other reasons. And really, I, there were these two parallel journeys playing out at the same time. And it was the most stretching season of my life. But I love how God, I, I don't think I could have rode the Atlantic if I hadn't have gone through that. And and just the, the preparation mentally of going through such a difficult thing, it kind of just helped me so much on the ocean. So the book is very much, don't just wish things. Yes, dream extraordinary big dreams, but do them. And going through that tough time with my mom and our darkest family crisis and on the ocean when you're in the middle of the Atlantic and you wonder what on earth am I doing here and the the waves were 50 foot waves you know the size of houses that just made me cry with fear and I had to look at fear in the face and and I just literally had to declare God's promises and you know not be ruled by my emotions my sleep deprived state hallucinating and so on so the book is really, I've been really vulnerable in it. Yeah. And I think we can impress through our strengths, but we connect through our vulnerabilities. And it's really the personal story of, of the struggles of my personal kind of growing up yeah. life of 
wrong choices and so on as well. And the name of the book is? Row for Freedom, Crossing an Ocean in Search of Hope. Wow, sounds really cool. I hope people will check it out. Julia, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.